So if you look at the package, you'll see two things. You'll see a modem and you'll see a Wi-Fi bar. Now, as we know, routers are a 3G modem part and a Wi-Fi part all in one device. And 3G comes from the outside. 3G likes to live outside. And Wi-Fi is designed for the inside. Wi-Fi likes to live inside. So you always sit in this predicament where you have two technologies in one device. And if you put your normal Wi-Fi modem in, in house, um, it gets you can connect to it easily with Wi-Fi, but it struggles to get good 3G signal. And if you take it and you put it outside, now it can get good 3G, but now the Wi-Fi doesn't get into the house. So what we did is we've split the two. We've split it, we make a USB Wi-Fi modem, which goes to the outside. Here it is. And we might take a Wi-Fi part that goes to the inside. So I'm going to start with this. And I'm, uh, this is a Huawei E3131 architecture of the modem. We chose the E3131 because it's a very well-known and a very compatible um, device. It can, most modems are based on the design of the E3131. It is made at a contract manufacturer which is already manufacturing for Huawei. But what they did for us is they um, increased the quality so that it can operate up to 85 degrees Celsius. So it can be mounted outside and live in the sun uh, and the modem will still work. A normal standard USB modem uh, doesn't work if it gets hotter than 50 degrees mm -hmm. Celsius. Also what they did for us is uh, the traditional Huawei connector is that CRC9 connector and they're very expensive and uh, they changed the CRC9 for us to a U.FL connector which is the connector that's used commonly in the Wi-Fi environment. So it suits the frequency range and it's a much more available low cost uh, connector which makes the total cost of the product less. Then this Wi-Fi modem sits on the one side of the, the enclosure and the other side of the enclosure is a, a 2 dBi dipole antenna. It's our Omni 39 or our cellular blade antenna and radiator inside. Mm. Um, so that is a much better antenna than what is on the modem traditionally. traditionally. Usually the modem has got a small little PC board folded dipole thingy, but this antenna is almost 10 times better than what's usually on the modem. Yep. Uh, the dipole is a 2 dBi antenna. It's the broadband um, mm. 2 dBi. As compared to traditional USB modems, what it what be is kind of a PFAS at zero. Is it almost mm. zero? No. Okay. But the amount of signal strength that you get is a lot better. Yes, yes. Just because the size of the antenna is so much bigger. So uh, what we did here is, um, this is the first time that we've combined the uh, antenna and a modem together in one enclosure. In the GSM 3G environment, you don't often, you don't really see this happening. In the Wi-Fi environment, you see it where you have a modem and a router and a radio card with the antenna. And uh, that's where we've learned that it's better to put the electronics with the antenna. So it's almost an active antenna or an integrated modem. So all in one. And then there's a short little RF cable. Um, that goes from the modem to antenna, so it's very little loss, so it's not a long cable, it's usually if you have to put the router inside, you need 10 meter cable to get the antenna outside. Now it's just a short RF cable, so the signal strength is really good. Then it's got a 5 meter USB cable attached to it, and 5 meters because that's the limit of the USB stand, it can't go further than 5 meters. And uh, so the first option to use this is you can plug it directly into your laptop's USB port, and it functions like a normal modem. Um, it installs the native app, um, it's an unbranded um, app that gets installed on Windows and then there you can connect to, to your operator. Then this modem has got uh, about five different mounting options from desktop, window mount, outdoor, wall mount and pole mount. But the most effective one and the only one that I'm going to talk about now is the window mount because that's really the easiest and the most uh, versatile and it's, uh, it has the biggest impact with the least amount of effort. So, as you know these suckers, that's our suckers that traditionally comes from the um, uh, um, panel 38. So these suckers suck really well, you know, they stick and we've, mm -hmm. we've fine-tuned them. So you take the sucker and you put it on the 
on the device and then you stick it onto the window. And just for this modem to be a bit higher, first of all, and secondly to be able to see the outside, there's a huge improvement in the speed. Then you take the cable and you can plug it into your, into your PC. And uh, you can take this around with you. You can still be mobile. You can take it to your coffee shop, or you can sit and work there, or you can use it at your home or at your office as you as you are you're roaming around. And with a traditional router, they um, it's difficult to move the plug and the router. It's, it's much easier to to carry around. Then the next part is the Wi-Fi part. This is a uh, Wi-Fi access point. USB um, interface, power supply all in one. Once again, it's a uh, gas approved. If you plug it into the two pin plug, it makes a Wi Fi access point. Uh, you can see the SSID at the bottom. There's the SSID that will uh, appear on your Wi Fi network. Mm. And then the wireless LAN key, the security key to log on into it. And then you can take this plug from your iMod modem and you can plug it into the USB of the Wi-Fi router part. Now you've got internet um, via Wi-Fi and 15 people can connect to it and um, so it's now it's functionally the same as a normal router. Uh, the only difference is that it's, you, it's more versatile because you can take the modem part with you and you can leave this at home if you want to, at the office if you want to. Uh, and also now the 3G part is getting good signal as it wishes to get from the from the outside and the Wi-Fi is inside so that you can get good Wi-Fi coverage. It's 150 megabits per second, 802.11n Wi-Fi. Um, it covers about the same area as a Telcom, uh, Telcom ADSR router, if you mm. compared them. So this would cover our floor, this of the volume at the top. Now uh, this device is very useful because it can also um, use do failover. This WAN port is for another source of internet, ADSL, mm -hmm. satellite, whatever you have, or wireless ISP. If you plug an Ethernet cable into here with internet on it, it will choose the WAN as priority number one. And then if that falls over, if it stops or if it breaks, if there's no more internet, if the device cannot pick up internet, mm -hmm. then it will automatically fall over, over, over to USB. Oh, yes. okay. Or oh, no. Is there some configuration that no. needs to be done so it automatically fails off? Yeah. This goes off, off the network, it goes to USB. It, it actually just checks if there's internet, mm -hmm. and then if there's no internet, then it, then it goes off. So if it cannot find the DNS server, then it falls over to this. I think the DNS server is the, the factor that it looks for to know that there is internet. Yeah. Then it's got a LAN, so you can plug a PC or into the LAN. Um, you can also configure this as a Wi-Fi repeater, so we do sell them separately as well. So uh, this can be a normal repeater. We plug it in where there is some coverage, and then it will um, re-radiate another SSID, mm. another, this, so it will create another network which is then bigger, and it will expand your network. So it serves as a client device which connects to a current access point, and this client device re-radiates another access point for to enlarge the coverage. Also, this USB port, uh, if you don't put a modem in it, you can put a flash drive into it. You can log into the web interface and you can, uh, there's a file sharing option. Really nice and neat, easy accessible. And you can access the files on that flash drive. Mm -hmm. You can't edit it, it's not a server, but you can just share it. So it becomes very really versatile, it's very really useful little thing. All, all in one package. Uh, any questions? Uh, no, I think it's. Um, is can, this? Can is this? Sorry. Okay. Is this a uh, uh, product uh, waterproof, weatherproof? Can you put yes. it outside, not yes, necessarily yes. on the window inside? Yeah, yeah definitely. So, if you want to uh, get even better signal than from a window, you can uh, mount it outside. And I just want to show you. There's a little screwdriver supplied with it. You can open it over here. To it is um, and there you put the SIM card in, and then you can see there's a seal over here, 
so it seals it, so it can live outside in the rain, no problem. Well, um, the plastic is also UV stabilized, so it will last for 7 to 10 years outside in the lots of sun. Screws for how to do And um, then it's got different mounting options. The other mounting options is you can use these two brackets. And you can uh, attach these brackets to the side, to the back. Now it's pole mount. And it actually allows for pole mount. If you're only mounted really high enough. Yes. Because it's an omnidirectional antenna, you don't have to align it. But if you mount this above your roof height, you're guaranteed to see your base station somewhere. And if you also, you don't want to mount it on a pole because um, your complex doesn't allow you to do it or there is no pole, you can also mount it on the wall outside. So it's supplied with two of these and these uh, screws. You can drill a hole and mount it in the wall, onto the wall. And that will also be higher than in the window which will, every meter that you go up, you almost get 3 dB more signal stream. So that's the various mounting options. The cable? The cable, if you mount it outside, um, you would want to drill a hole in the wall or somewhere to get the cable to the inside. So the router requires a normal USB, I think it's type A connector, and then what we did is we just supplied this adapter part. So if you unplug the adapter, you have a mini yeah, USB no. cable. So the hole that you have to drill on the wall is much smaller. So this is a 12mm hole, which is the drill bits that they already have, which is the same drill bits for drilling holes for um, coach screws and for, yes, wall, yeah. for um, wall plugs and for roll bolts. If, you have to, if it was a traditional, usually normal USB plug, then you would have had to drill a 25mm hole. It's a bigger drill bit and a bigger drill, so that just makes the installation also a little bit easier.